What's happening, folks? It's your guy Rashad out here at Action Sports Bar and Grill in Kent, Washington with a, another follow me to work. Day in the life of a food truck owner. Uh, today's video is a rant, basically. You know, it's like that sometimes. Uh, bosses have bad days too. So this, even though this video was mostly a rant, there is a little bit of knowledge in there. So I do have a pro tip for you if you stick around to the end. All right. <laughs> so this is one of those days of bar ownership that suck. Another one of those, right? It's crazy. Having quite a few of these lately, I guess, huh? Well, it'd be like that sometimes. Not every day is going to be fucking sunshine and rainbows. So, um, today is one of those days that is definitely, definitely not like that. We have staff shortages everywhere right now. Um, between sicknesses and bereavement and um, people having other jobs, um, people got hangnails, I mean, fucking everything you could possibly, possibly come up with for reasons for missing work, it has happened in the last, really, especially the last year since the start, the reopening after, after COVID. It's a shit show, man. It's, it's crazy. I get it. It's tough. You know, when you have stuff going on in life, when people are sick, it's hard to get to work. I get it. Things happen and in this industry. <clears throat> you have to be, you know, flexible and understanding that things like that happen. But at the end of the day, we've got a job to do here and we have service and um, products we need to provide on a consistent basis. And it requires people to be here on a consistent basis. So we've been short staffed and I'm tired of wearing out my people who usually do a great job and fill in for those people who are out. All of the people who are picking up slack are getting overworked, uh, including myself and my managers. Uh, so I made the painful decision of closing early today on a Friday night, which is our busiest night. Um, I can hear it's a ton of activity out there right now. People would love to be hanging out all night, but we just gave last call at 7 p.m. because I'm going to close at 8. Um, I got here early this morning after a long day yesterday. Um, my daytime opener, she's still out there. She got here at 10 o'clock this morning and is still rolling. Um, you just can't just break your people. Um, my kitchen manager stayed for like an extra couple of minutes that he could. Um, but we've got no cook back there in the kitchen. Uh, we're doing a limited menu again, which is um, a real pain in the ass considering how, how far our food has come and how far we brought it to be back in the situation where we're kind of, we can't execute because we don't have enough people. So uh, I have informed the staff that I will be adjusting our hours of operations going forward. I'm not gonna keep trying to stretch ourselves and overextend ourselves. Uh, and running around like a crazy person and scrambling. I would much rather just take a beat, um, pull back the hours that we're working right now, uh, pull back the hours that we're open and just execute what we can execute until I can get a full staff in here uh, that wants to work full-time hours and wants to commit full-time hours. Um, I really like personally the people that I have on my staff and some of them will definitely be on the team and make it through this um, kind of tight uh, re this purge really is what it's going to be because not everybody is going to make it i need people who are committed so the people who are will make it through with me and will reopen with the full staff with longer hours hopefully in about four weeks um and if not then uh i will just run with the bare bone staff with the few people uh who do want to work and are available and have shown that they're reliable um i'll run with them and my managers and we'll do a staff shortened hours and do things that way the bad news for the staff um i know that there's this general feeling that employers are helpless and they you know what are they going to do without good employees and oh my gosh agony agony the problem for my staff with that is i don't buy any of that shit at the end of the day labor is the biggest drain on any business and um if people aren't interested in working then 
for me as a business owner, from my standpoint, then it's a real easy equation. I just cut back the hours of operation and execute it within hours that either me and or a combination of me and my managers can take care of. Um, I can still bartend, I can still work back in the kitchen uh, as well too. So if we cut our hours from um, right now, they were open about 16 hours. If I just cut my hours back to eight, <coughs> um, then I'll just execute it and I'll just need one bartender to get through the shift. I can literally get by with uh, less than half of the staff that I have right now. So. Uh, nobody wants to do that. It's definitely not a growth move. I have growth moves in mind as we get the, the rebranding and the food truck rolling out. Um, if I had six more people right now, it would be great because um, I will have room and time for them once we get uh, hours available for them once we get open. But um, I don't have six people right now that um, six additional people that I can fill in the spots and we're shorthanded and I'm not going to just keep being shorthanded perpetually trying to play catch up um, that's not how I want to do it like I say all the time you have to be flexible in this business and the beauty for us is we're a small business and we have a really small leadership team so our decision we can move on a dime um, we decided today that we're not going to keep over extending ourselves like this so we'll make the change uh, in a couple of days I'll figure out exactly what hours we'll cut to I'll let the rest of the staff know my full-time pl employees will be taken care of first because they're committed and they're full-time employees so they will work the lion's share of all the hours and if I have anything left over the people that treat us like leftovers will get the leftovers so um, that's how that's gonna work uh, like I said we just had a meeting about this stuff I gave the staff plenty of fair warning months prior that hey if you are treating us like a side bitch like you want to just call us up in the middle of the night and think you're just going to pop through you will be treated just the exact same way you get out of this what you put into it so uh, we're an afterthought when everything is right something you can go and do then don't be surprised when you get it back that way um might not be the uh, most how to win friends and influence people or loving type of way to be but I, you know i'm still a work in progress and i don't play that shit. i just don't i'm one of those people who believes in reciprocating energy so um you give me shit, you're gonna get back shit. so uh not the funnest day to be a bar owner uh or a bar manager or even a bartender because i feel bad for the staff that you know has had to hear me <laughs> be shitty like this but um, at the same time, uh, I showed up to work today. Uh, I showed up to work uh, and tried to be professional about it. Uh, if everyone else was doing that, they wouldn't have to hear my mouth. But anyways, uh, yeah, so that's all it is going on with us. Uh, it was a good day yesterday with the truck, um, followed up by a shitty day here at the actual location. So it'd be like that sometimes. Uh, leaving a lot of money on the table tonight by closing on a Friday night, especially based on the start that we have out there. But uh, sometimes you have to make decisions and it's not going to be based on dollars and cents. Sometimes you have to make decisions based on, um, you know, what's best for you long term. So uh, having had to change our hours on a multiple multitude of occasions since the start of COVID, um, we had issues with our next door neighbor. We had to change our hours for uh, with all of the varying phases they had us coming in and out of for for the COVID recovery, we've had to change our hours a bunch of times. So what I've learned for sure is we'll be all right. We'll be all right. If it's noon to 12, if it's 8 a.m. to 4 p.m., we'll be all right. Um, with uh, the core group of people we have here. Um, so when we can open back up and expand more, I'm looking forward to it. When we can't, then, then we can't until I get some people. So next week I will be out recruiting, um, going back to my original first sales job, which was employment recruiting back in the day. Uh, I'm gonna have to bust that hat out and just get out there and start getting us some applicants in so that I can get some trainees in and we can find out out of those trainees who's a good prospect and out of those who prospects who's a, who can identify themselves as a leader, wants to make some fucking money and let's go out and get it. Um, until then, we'll just uh, we'll coast with me eating up a bunch of hours and uh, Jill eating up a bunch of hours and Jade eating up a bunch of hours and 
Drea eating up a bunch of hours, and so we'll we'll go with the the staff who's in leadership to to eat a bunch of the hours and keep the thing going until we find a team, uh, a complete team that is willing to put in that same type of work and commitment. Um, I don't know how this sounds to people. If you see this and you're on the team now and you might feel some kind of way about, like, oh, Rashad's talking about, I didn't mention anybody by name, but yeah, that's real shit. Like I say, like I just said in the meeting, this, you might not get any, be held accountable anywhere else in your life. You might not have anywhere else in your life where people tell you how it is as far as <laughs> in your relationships <laughs> but here the worker employer relationship i'm gonna tell you how it is and um i'm gonna hold everybody accountable including me including everybody on staff so just like i told them you don't like it you don't want to hear it this is an at will state go someplace else I don't, I don't know any other way to put it um if if uh if you can't if, if people can't hear uh, and acknowledge that uh you know we have definitely um underperformed in some areas in the last quarter if they're not trying to hear that then they'll never get better and we'll never do better so everybody thinks this bar ownership is nothing but fun and sitting back and drinking and uh having a good time that is not the case not the case at all Ooh. Ooh. Excuse me. A lot of long nights, early mornings, and dealing with people's bullshit, for sure. Hardest part of this industry, hands down, is the people. Hands down. Wrangling cats. I swear, sometimes it's like wrangling fucking cats. So my pro tip today is have someone to talk out your frustrations with to work through the issues of uh, food truck ownership and entrepreneurship, the stresses and the pressure and the anxiety. Have someone that you can talk through your frustrations with, uh, whether it you set up a confessional and you're talking to a camera or you're talking to a spouse, a significant other, a friend, a girlfriend, um, a deacon, take it to the Lord in prayer, um, somebody, because uh, it's, it's too much to keep bottled up and it will negatively affect your business and you could also come out sideways at someone who really doesn't deserve it. So um, I know that talking through this stuff is a successful strategy because not only did I feel better after uh, just talking it out on camera, I can look back now and we made it out of that situation stronger uh, and better positioned because of the attitude that we took towards it at that time. And we didn't have any casualties in staffing, like people getting fired who, or people who were no longer on the team where it wasn't warranted. So uh, I, I definitely think that's the right way to go.